Welcome to another 21 Hats Dashboard. Every Monday, Gene Marks and I talk about the issues we think business owners should be following. Welcome, Gene. Hey, how are you, Lauren? You watching that Beatles special yet? <laughs> not yet, not yet, but I'm looking highly forward to it. it. Yeah, yeah, highly I, recommend it. I need to set aside eight hours at some point. <laughs> and get a subscription to Disney. <laughs> right, exactly. All right, first story, Gene. I want to talk about something the Wall Street Journal published on Friday that's right up your alley as a CPA. It's about how a bunch of states have created workarounds so that business owners won't be subject to the cap on salt tax deductibility. In other words, states are, are, are going out of their way to help business owners specifically pay less in taxes. I thought that this kind of had a when pigs can fly feel to it. And I was wondering <laughs> if you can explain what's going on here. Well, the states uh, want to make sure that they're getting their tax money, so they're you know trying to give a federal tax benefit to their businesses. Um, this goes back to 2017 with the Tax Reform Act. There was a limit where you know we can individually deduct our state and local tax, like real estate taxes, for example, and the limit was ten thousand um, dollars. Now it's also uh, income got, tax, right? So it can get get considerably more than ten thousand yeah. dollars, right? Sure. And, and, but, you know, this is on our personal tax returns. We could only deduct that amount. And it was, you know, for a lot of pass through businesses, you know, it was, it was a real issue because in a pass through like an S corp or a partnership, the money comes down to your, you know, individual tax return and then you're limited to what you can deduct for your state taxes. Okay. So that was an issue for a lot of people. And it's certainly an issue in, Frankly, a lot of the blue states, um, they, they tend to have little higher tax rates or real estate taxes. So um, about 20 states now, almost half the states in the country have, have kind of um, made some accommodation to their local business owners. Uh, what are the 20 states? I mean, like New York, California, Connecticut. Basically, if your governor is a Democrat, uh, there's a good chance that your state <laughs> has made this change. And what, what it's really done is it's it's kind of shifted the this – it's basically made the state and local taxes – deductible on your business tax return. So you can take that deduction for it at that level. Uh, and then, you know, it, then that way it gets deducted before the income comes to you on your personal tax return. And therefore, um, you can, you can take advantage of this deduction, um, still pay your state taxes. And, uh, the IRS has, has allowed you to do that. So without getting into the weeds on this, you know, Lauren, which I would have to have a spreadsheet to explain this. And it's My, different for every state. It is different for every state. The, the bottom line is this. If you um, you want to talk to your accountants this year, you want to check what your state's rules are for, st for deducting state and local taxes because through a combination of these deductions and credits, the states are allowing some small businesses to take this deduction, take advantage of this in, ex in excess of that $10,000. You can still take advantage of this. Um, if do you have to do something before years. the end of the year or can you just do this when you, you prepare your taxes? You can do this when it comes time to do your, your tax returns. But, you know, what I found out, look, listen, I love my profession and other CPAs in my profession, but sometimes, you know, we might not all be up to date on all of these things. Um, this was an article that you would, it was in the Wall Street Journal. Um, so I would point them to this article. It just came out. I'm looking at it now, Lauren, like December 6th about deducting the state and local tax. Um, make sure your accountant is aware of this because if you're in one of those 20 states, you might be able to fully take advantage uh, well in excess of the ten thousand dollar cap if i'm not mistaken this really is targeting business owners specifically i mean the the, the cap could have an impact on doctors and lawyers and and uh, and others as well but this is for business owners right yeah, it really is because it, what you can do is you can take that deduction at the business level before your income passes down to you at the personal level. So that way you can, you've got that tax benefit before, you know, it, you know, and so you're saving money. Your income is lower when it comes down to your personal tax return. So if you're a business and you file like an S corporation or, you know, a partnership return, you can probably take advantage of this if you're in one of those 20 states. All right. Next story. Uh, another Wall Street Journal story from last week. Uh, businesses are budgeting for 
big raises next year. Uh, the, the, the journal story focused primarily on fairly big businesses, but small smaller businesses have to compete sometimes with those big businesses for employees. So it could have an impact on uh, smaller businesses as well. You also recently wrote a story giving business owners some tips on ways to deal with increased labor costs. Can you walk us through a few of those? I can. Uh, first of all, just very quickly, Lauren. So the uh, you know so far year to date, uh, you know hourly wages have gone up about five percent, um, and year to date, um, a total compensation among private companies. Um, that compensation is salaries, hourly commissions, tips, all payments to employees have actually risen close to ten percent on a year to year basis. So wages are going up, and and they're not going to go down. Uh, once you've given those increases, and many people are budgeting for five to seven percent increases, uh, you know, next year. I mean, you know, the the inflation rate just came out, Consumer Price Index on Friday, uh, saying that you know the CPI was at six point eight percent. I mean, your employees have to keep up with inflation, or else you're going to lose your employees. So this is a big issue, and and businesses are going to have to face this. So what are companies doing? So you know, just a few different things. I keep telling. You know, my clients, if you're hiring new employees and you're going to be paying a little bit more, obviously, leverage that work opportunity tax credit. Uh, it's the work opportunity tax credit. It's for any employee that you hire that's been unemployed for more than six months or out of prison or out of the military or off of welfare. You can get like a $9,600 credit per employee, per new hire. Uh, this goes through 2025. And that, that can help mitigate some of those, at least those first year costs for employees. Employees. So that that's definitely a big deal. Number two is is of course outsourcing and making you know more use of independent contractors is a huge you know it continues to be. I mean worker classification rules are going to be changing. Uh, the Department of Labor and the IRS are looking at them, but for now it's it's a really good way to to, to save on employment costs, taxes, and benefits. And then finally, there's technology. Did I, Lauren? I forget when we spoke last week. Did I tell you my story in Vegas at the Paris Hotel? Yes, you did. Yes, you yeah. did. So. You know, and it's just I won't go through it again, but I'm just seeing just just well, the point know. of it was that there used to be 12 people working the desk when you checked into the hotel and now there's one. Yeah, now there's one because they've all been replaced by self-service kiosks. And you might be like, oh, OK, that's good for big businesses. But there is just I'm compiling another list of small businesses around the country, cafes and restaurants and retail shops that are replacing employees with self-service kiosks, with contactless payment systems, with uh, and even in the warehouse, robotics, drones, autonomous you know, vehicles going around, replacing forklifts. A lot of these technologies have come down significantly in costs. So if you're in an industry, you want to look at your association's websites and see who the sponsors are and what technologies are coming up in that industry because making those investments in, in there is going gonna, is gonna to really keep your head count down and make your existing employees a lot more productive. And that's going to save you on compensation costs as well. So work opportunity tax credit, outsourcing where you can using independent contractors and just tech, tech, tech investments. That's what I'm seeing my clients do this year. One thing I would add, uh, based on conversations I've had lately with a few business owners, is there's an awful lot of talk about how to hire people and, you know, thinking about the people you, the, the slots you need to fill. It's important to also keep in mind you want to keep the people you have, especially the ones you like. And you need to be thinking about what you're doing to make sure that they're not going to be tempted by that thousand dollar signing bonus that might come their way uh, as, as things heat up. Yep, you're absolutely right. The hottest benefits, that's a whole other conversation. I'm going to be writing about that for the inquiry in the next couple of weeks, but obviously work from home. Flexible time off, you know, enhanced PTO, paid time off, uh, as well as obviously health and, and retirement benefits, you know, uh, same day pay, uh, reimbursing for tuition. It's just that all these things I'm just rattling off right now, Lauren, they just it, they just cost more. That you know, these are more benefits that you're giving employees, but that's because there's a lower supply of employees and a higher demand, and therefore costs go up when that situation happens. 
Next story. Uh, another one from the Wall Street Journal, but another one on a topic that you've also written about. Uh, the journal story uh, emphasized that American office buildings are facing a reckoning. Um, the, the point of it was that more and more, especially older office buildings, are being left vacant because businesses you know, don't have – they're going hybrid. They don't have people in the office, and especially the old Older buildings are uh, are struggling, and some of them are being converted uh, for industrial use, either torn down or, or, or used as they are. And it, it quotes somebody. I thought this was pretty striking, saying uh, that he, uh, a developer, he never expected to see the day where industrial land would be worth more than office land. But here we are. Uh, you've written about the cost of uh, or the 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 cost of um, industrial space going up as well. Yeah, you know, I just wrote about that for the Philly Inquirer this week, and it's a. Um, I, I interviewed like a handful of commercial realtors, and they were telling me a little bit of a different story. I mean, all across the board. First of all, at least in Philly, and I know in a lot of other parts of the country, like real estate's been hot. Um, the big thing is warehouse space. Uh, you know, e-commerce sales have increased like more than 20% year over year. Um, Amazon, Walmart, Target, Macy, all these people are looking for plate. You, know, you and I want our stuff, right? But I mean, not I just those. It's also all these startup fast delivery places like GoPuff, which is based in Philadelphia, I believe. Yes. That's exactly right. I mean, listen, I, you know, I want my, my, the, the shaver I use to shave down my head. I want that like today, you know, I mean, these are things that I'm, they're very important to me. So it is a, uh, they're promising uh, in 15 minutes, Gene. Is that quick yeah, enough? It, it might not be if you take a look at what my face looks like. So you, 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 there's such a demand for having stuff on site and closer that there's been this huge demand for warehouse space. And you should, I mean, Lauren, I mean, from between Philly and New York, all on the Northeast corridor, I mean, warehouse space is really being snapped up by those guys. So, so the realtors are, you know, are, are loving that. Um, you know, it's funny about um, office space, though. A few of the realtors that I interviewed also told me that, um, you know, office space, at least in, in this region, has maintained its rents and they've not seen the decrease in square footage that some other people are, are reporting on, mainly because um, the, as workers are coming back to work, yes, there are less, you know, there are more work from home people. So there's theoretically less people in the office, but a lot of companies are changing their internal office design. They're, you know, they used to have the open floor plans where you're sitting across from some guy eating his tuna sandwich for lunch, you know, and sharing the same desk. And, you know, now because post COVID, that's not the case. So people are, they, they, they need to switch spread their employees out more. They're even going back to cubicles. So even though there are less people in the office, there's still, you know, square footage is needed because they're more spread out. So they're seeing, they're not seeing their tenants decrease their square footage like they were expecting to see, which I thought was interesting. So I mean, I guess- That is interesting. The, the, the journal way. kind of drew a line w based on how recently uh, updated the, the office had been, that uh, the, the newer buildings and the renovated buildings are doing well. The older ones are struggling um, for obvious reasons. Do you want to put money into renovating a, a place that, that's older and where you may not see a future? Yeah. And so that may be the case. It also might be that even renovating those those older buildings or retrofitting the the internal design is just not worth it. And it's easier to do. You know, the, the newer buildings and the new space are just more flexible. Um, but I don't know. Listen, you and I, you know, we had this conversation over a year ago, a year and a half ago. Everybody like the sky was falling down on office space, you know, and everybody was the, all you know, the cities are going to close and no offices are going to be open and all that. And that's just a bunch of baloney. Um, the offices are still there. Uh, you know, some of them are cutting back on square footage. So there, there's there, there's truth to that report. But more than I expected, at least according to these you know, the, the commercial agents that I talked to, um, are not reducing their square footage because uh, they they can they still have to accommodate. You know, they got to space out those workers. So it's an interesting dynamic. Yeah, I, I think part of the, the offices are going to be put to a different use. It's it, people may end up doing their you know heads down work at home and coming in for. 
you know, the opportunity to mix with other employees and brainstorm. Yeah. And I also think the, um, you know, there's just a great opportunity for startups. I do think, say those older buildings that we're talking about, depending on where they're located, uh, you know, you, you, they might have had larger tenants that have scaled back or not leasing as much space. And I think the, the people that own those buildings would be happy to lease out a room or two. Yeah, I think to they would. And, and all of a sudden you're a startup and you, an two. And, yeah, you got an address on like Park Avenue or something. I don't know. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, last story. Uh, inflation, it was just announced, hit a 39-year high. Um, that came out today. Uh, I think it rose 6.8% in November. Um, I guess it's not transitory, huh? No. Listen, the most shocking thing about this story is that it's that 39-year high. It's, we haven't seen inflation that high since 1982. And that's when I graduated high school. And I can't fucking believe it's been 39 years since I graduated high school. That was the most shocking part of that story that I saw. Not the fact that inflation is- I see. <laughs> uh, but I can tell you this much, Lauren. The um, uh, next week- Keep your eyes open. I don't. The consumer price index is one thing. Watch the producer price index. That's coming out next week. That those are the core material prices for businesses. It was at eight point six percent last month. I think it's going to be close to ten percent this month. That's going to get a lot of high, uh, a lot of headlines, and and that's what's going to foreshadow inflation over the next few months as those costs start coming into the market for consumers. So we'll keep an eye on that, and maybe we'll talk about that next week. Gene Marks is a CPA and writes weekly on small business for The Guardian, The Hill, The Philadelphia Inquirer, The Washington Times, Forbes, and Entrepreneur. You can also hear him on ABC Radio's Eye on the World with John Batchelor. Gene hosts two popular small business podcasts with Paychex Corporation and The Hartford. Thank you, Gene. Thank you, Lauren. We'll see you next week. Always great speaking with you. Have a great week, everyone. 